Hey Murphy's. Okay, so I really need to turn that swing light up a little bit. It's coming across dark on some pages. Here should be. Hey Jessica. Hey. Yo. Is that better? Hey Minister Teddy. Hey Mavis. Robin. Okay, from everybody. <laughs> from Salida and Olivia. Okay. All right. Hey. Kiara in the house. Zesta. Rochelle. I forgot to take my phone off the hook so you hear it buzzing in the background. Kim. Trusty Peoples. Kim. Lena Dowdell. Trusty, your complexion is a little dark. Megan. Notice. Big Daddy is. Act like you don't hear that phone beeping. Dr. Austin. Brother Sullivan. Sister Shirley. Come on, children. Let's get in here. 7 o'clock. Dr. Tatum. Dr. Tatum, uh, if you got time tonight, <coughs> FaceTime in your face. Tisha. Mr. Connie. Joe and Lady Connolly. Hey, Talitha. Steven. Nicole. <laughs> Nicole. Nicole. All right. Bubbles in the house. Hey, Simone. Hey, Sonia. What's up, girl? Hey, guys, we're taking in Sonia. Sonia's about to be a new member in the house. She's about to be NBC fortified. Hey, Kenzie. About to be fortified. NBC. About to be NBC bread. Come on, y'all. We going behind. We got some folks dragging and swagging. Let's start sharing. Like, share, subscribe. KBJ, like, share, subscribe. No, it's not serious, Dr. Tatum. Just want to see your face. Don't be laughing, Sonia. You about to be fortified. BBT in the house. Recovering. Amen. Hey, Paris. <laughs> Demetra, hey pumpkin. Since Katrina, I didn't know where you were. Hey Jeremy, I've got to get uh, slime. Uh, uh, we got to set slime up. Uh, engineers, we got to set slime up. I need slime on the phone. Hey Sid. Uh, if, we're going to set you up Sunday, Slime, even if I got to come to the house. Okay? I'm going to set you up by Sunday, even if we got to come to the house. For some reason, all of a sudden, my eyes are acting crazy. <laughs> you still got to call Jess back. Oh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Love you, Tiger Shirley. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is Tyrene. Angela Cousins in the house. Come on, let's get here. Like, share, subscribe. Hey, Sustan. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share. When I say subscribe, I'm talking about to the YouTube channel. And I want to thank you all for allowing others. Hey, Gladys, for allowing others to to uh, have a little bit of your pastor. Hey, Pam, bitch. Fuqua, pumpkin, uh, because I get a lot of DMs in reference to who you all are sharing with and sharing to. And a lot of people are saying, hey, I'm a friend of so-and-so and so-and-so, and, so, and, so, and they, they turn me on to you, and you, 
You're a great teacher. And, you know, I want to say thank you. And you're right. <laughs> yes, indeed. I boast not in myself, but in the God who is my Father. Amen. Amen. There's a healing in the house. That's exactly right. There's a healing in the house. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Zoe. Come on, children. Come on in the room. Jesus is a doctor. Hey, Marcia. It's like, oh, Sherelle, I missed you. You tried to slip out on me? I missed you. Right up all my scriptures. Gives me all my medicine. In the room. Come on, y'all. Let's like and share. Don't be ashamed of your pastor because she just hit that hit that song. Thank you, Sadrain. Thank you. Okay, we done gave him enough time to get started. Let us uh, go forth. Uh, hey, Crystal. Crystal, uh, FaceTime me. Let me see your face. I asked for Greg Reed, but I can't find him anywhere, you know. Uh, I tried to communicate with him, but it's not happening. Every time I call him, Bella answers the phone. Figure that. Figure that. Tony, Minister Tony Burrell in the house. No, don't blow kisses, Sherelle. Tell me where you were. Oh, that's what it is. Thank you, Crystal. I don't have his new number. Thank you. Help me keep up with my youngest. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Lord bless. Amen. 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 Uh, tonight, we're going to do a little breakdown, a little understanding. Uh, we're going to try to get things in order that we might have a better understanding. Hey, Dorian, a better understanding of uh, how to operate in our uh, realm walking, how to operate in a, um, allowing our manifestation of our miracles to come forth in the meantime, operating in the opposite and directional realms. Um, Sunday's message was entitled, By Thought, Word, and Deed. Now, oftentimes, thought, word, and deed, those words are said in a prayer. And usually they're said because what they're asking for is a sinner's prayer. Forgive me by for my, you know, thought, words, and deeds that were not of your, you know, desire, oh God. Hey, Jetta. And so, in this particular case, we're not using it in a prayer, but I thought it was important on um, tonight that I get you to understand. It is a, a prayer of uh, repentance. It is a prayer of penitence. Now, those are two different words. Now, you know how I am about vocabulary. Uh, I, it's important to use the right word in the right places. But I also believe it's important to wear the right clothes in the right places. Uh, it's, it's just, I'm a stickler for stuff like that. Now, repentance is to be sorrowful in action or feeling for wrongdoing. And to turn from your wicked ways. And to turn from no way. That's repentance. That's repentance. Good evening, Terry. Terry who? Return from your wicked ways. Penitence. P E N I. P E N C E. Penitence is a transitioning of action of feeling sorrowful about your wicked ways, but you may not turn from them. <laughs> You get the difference? Repentance is I turn from my wicked ways. Hey, Ganesha, I turn from my wicked ways, and I'm sorrowful that I committed those ways. Penitence, P and I, is where I have a feeling of sorrow, but I may not turn from my wicked ways. That's uh, nine out of ten times most of us sitting in the pew at church. Yeah, 
That is the difference between those. So when the Word of God talks about uh, my thought, word, or deed, it says in Colossians, we, I think we read that Sunday, 3 and 17. Let's go back and, and look at that. But don't go back now. i got some other things to tell you. Just write that down. We want to make sure that we understand deed is conscious actions. Conscious actions. That means whatever I'm doing, I'm making an effort to do it. I'm not haphazardly doing things. Why do you say that, Pastor? I say that because the churches have become routine gatherings. The churches have become routine gatherings, and we go there, and you get a song, a sermon, a wafer, some juice, and you're out of there. That's not how it's really supposed to operate. If you're gathering and you don't see the miraculous or miracle works of God, then you become routine in your church gathering. Yeah. And that stops you from realm walking. Yeah. I'm going to slow down because I gave two powerful definitions that I think are important. And I see that they're putting them on the screen now to give you the definition. It is imperative that the organization called church should still be moving in the miraculous powers of God. Manifestation of miracles should be prevalent or abundant. Why? Because he's still performing them today. Churches that gather that don't have signs of miracles and wonders then begin to become routine in its Attendance, programming, character, and attitude. Yes, a church can have an attitude. Yes, a church has an attitude. And so, if we're just going to church, because that's where Big Mama went, and there's nothing happening there, we need to jump ship. Yeah. Because what we're doing is, we're participating in a religious Tradition. You cannot round walk in religion. Write that down. You cannot round walk in tradition. Okay, Simon said, I talked to God about this the other day. What'd he say? Eh, what'd he say? In order to live in the realms and go back and forth through the realms, the realms, the uh, land that God gave you uh, uh, through death. Okay, going back for the coordinate points. Makes you a steward over what he's given you. So you have to check on your property. You never learn to check on your heavenly realm properties if you're going to a church that's constantly preaching flesh. That was good. Let me give you a little background so we can know where we're going. Do you agree that God created the heavens and the earth? Okay, good. Show me, send me up some hearts if you believe. I know this is rough. Y'all stop sending me hearts when I get to teaching. God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, he, thank you for the heart. Y'all funny. He created uh, out of the darkness. And uh, then he began to divide things. Okay? And once he began to divide, then you can't throw hearts and type too. I'd rather you type. <laughs> then, then, he began to make this thing and habitate this thing called earth. All right? So if God created the heaven and the earth, and he created the earth out of heaven, and he created man out of earth, then what's in both of us? Heaven and earth. Cool! <laughs> I 
I'll let you sit on that for a while. It's Wednesday. I ain't gonna give you too much. Hey, Sing Green. You know, Ralph Lauren needs to give me a. Hey, Joseph Pridgen. Ralph, a uh, Pastor Pridgen. Uh, Ralph Lauren needs to give me a. a, a, a what's your face? Too. What's the, What is it called? Sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Hey, Nina. So if God created the heaven and earth, and we read that in Genesis, let's not get brand new, and go back and read it, and then he created man out of the earth, that means I have both parts in me. So that means I should be able to visit both properties at will, because I'm created out of both. Then, that's what I was created out of. Then he gave life through the breath that he breathed in my nostril. We're, we're not taught that in church. So what we focus on, that's right. So what we focus on is earthly movement. And sometimes you, you get fed up. You know, I just, what was that commercial? Take me away, Calgon. I don't need Calgon to take me away. See, that was that bubble bath thing. I think it was a bubble bath or something. And it said, take me away, Calcon. At any given moment, I can leave this place because I'm a realm walker. Now, I know, I know, I know I'm going to lose some people, and everybody can't go. And I told you before, I'm not talking about drinking no jungle juice. I'm not talking about drinking no huggies in a, in a little cup. I'm not talking about putting $5 in your pocket and laying down and going to night-night. I'm talking about the Word of God. I'm talking about I am created in His image, and what He can do and what He does, I can do as well. Now, the problem with this is no one reinforces it because I'm not sure the pulpiteers believe it. I've heard preachers preach for eons, and they preach on the Father and the Son. But they never touch on the Holy Ghost. You cannot have vision manifest, manifest, whoo, make up a word. You cannot have vision manifest without relationship. Religion does not manifest your vision. Religion is a part, are you ready for this? Religion is a part of the tradition that makes you come to this place on Sundays at 10 or 11. I go to the place because I love him. Let's see, no, 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 no. It's so hard to preach. That's why I think just go to everybody's church. It's so hard to preach to people who don't know the word. Because I go expecting something great to happen. Because I've already had a vision of it before I get there. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So by the time I get there, I am geek. I am all tuned up for the manifestation. What now is so important is churches talk about manifestation and they get geeked too. They be running and screaming. I wish I could have a dance. Dun, 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 dun. Pastor Taylor told me she was going to teach me how to dance. But anyway, the bottom line is this. The miracles never manifest. All they're excited about is the thought of it. <laughs> When's the last time you seen blind eye open? Let me read it. When's the last time you seen the dead raised? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. There are realm walkers that move in the realm that know that this can be done. Pastors, we need to start recognizing healers, prophets, teachers, evangelists. We need to start recognizing those anointed in our congregation. It's time for us to start building another army. While we're not in the buildings, we can concentrate on this by hunger and thirsting. The relationship that I'm teaching you today by thought, word, and deed says, I consciously get up and I seek him. I'm seeking him when I go to bed, consciously. The last boo I say goodnight to is daddy boo. Boo God. Yeah. I remember times I used to hang on the phone with other booze. I can hang on the phone with God now. What you doing? I don't need a phone now. What you doing is, what well, big mom used to say, there's a telephone in my bosom. Good God. Hello, boo God. What you doing? Nothing. Yeah. See, that is the relationship. 
And then some people, that's blasphemous. How can she talk to God like that? Because I have a relationship with him. The, right, the reason you don't know how I can talk to him like that is because you don't have a relationship with him. Because if you had a relationship with him, he, who knows every hair on your head, would allow you to communicate with him where you are. Because he wants to communicate with you where you are. So by the time you get to the churches, and these pastors up in the pulpit using words you don't understand, put your pee pee finger up, buzz your head, and get out of there. Because it won't do you any good. What turns off realm walking is not understanding the word of God. Once you understand the word of God, why you say that? Let's go to John. Come on, he talking to that. Go to the first chapter of John. What good is a word that can't be understood? Okay, I still got advertisement, but God is good. That's okay. That's okay. I got it. Go to uh, chapter one. Uh, John chapter one. Verse 14, the word, I'm coming from the NIV, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Okay, okay, too soon. Go to John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, let me repeat that again. This ain't no humble jumbo mumbo mumbo. Get this, children, and I'm going to take time with you because I want you to get it. I want you to realm walk. I want you to quit worrying about things that's not your problem. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's verse 1. Then go down to verse 14. The Word became flesh. And made his dwelling among us. So the sustenance of Jesus was logos. Word. So everything you need is where? In Jesus. And so Jesus is what? The word. And so it's difficult for somebody to preach to you constantly. And you don't know some sentence of word. I'm not talking about memorization. I'm talking about understanding. I don't care if you don't know where it's found, as long as you know it's in there. Eventually, through relationship, through rhema, that word then becomes a lie. I'll sit back, because that's good teaching tonight. Right. And so, what happens is, when he walked on, on, on this earth, he came in the form of flesh, with all the concerns of flesh, all right? But he was still word-based, what he said, that's where we should be. But we're not being word-based because we're too busy being emotion-based. Because if you have an emotional uh, word foundation, it will slap that emotion right out of there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about you wouldn't cry. I'm not talking about you wouldn't laugh. I'm not talking about that you wouldn't feel sorrowful sometimes. I'm saying, though, it will redirect itself to realm. I'm about to get crazy. It will redirect itself through realm, and then I'll operate as he would, as he did. By thought, word, and deed. It's a conscious effort how I behave until it becomes what I have it. Not a routine, but a habit. The habit that I'm asking you all to, 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 to accept tonight is hunger and thirst. I'm asking you to chase after God. It will give you a better life here on earth. Now, if I'm created from the earth, which was 50% from heaven. I'm 50% spiritual and 50% flesh. I am what? I'm in an enigma. I am supernatural. 
Now, now, who's telling you this? Who's telling you this? Every time something goes around, you're being brought down because you're comparing yourself to a religious word that hasn't taught you we all fall short. That's what the word said. But the sin is not in, in falling. What's the sin in? Somebody type it real quick. The sin is not in, in falling. What's the sin? There's no sin in falling. What's the sin? The sin is in not getting up. Halftime. That's where the halftime analogy came in. The halftime analogy came in. So I didn't do well that first go round. Okay, now go back to where I taught you in the beginning. Repentance versus penitence. So some of us know that we didn't do well, but we don't repent for our, for our sins. We have a penitence. That means we recognize it and we feel sorrowful about it, but we don't change our character. You will never, ever see the manifestation of what he has for you if you keep having penitence. You must repent for your sins and change your ways. Yeah, you must move in your supernatural. And the more you move in your supernatural, the more you'll see how pleasing it is to your operation. By thought, word, and deed. Because if I think these things, I'll speak these things. By the time I speak these things, I'm manipulating my atmosphere, and then I'll begin to do these things. Once I begin to do these things, it's imperative that I'm consistent about doing these things. I'm not, as a pastor, telling you how to live your life. I'm telling you how it changed mine. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a mouthpiece giving you witness to what the word said and, and helping you understand on why it's written this way. I'm going to go back through it again. God created the heaven and earth. Do you agree? Send me up hearts because you can't type that fast. God created the heavens and the earth. Do you agree? Send up them hearts. Our man was created out of dust, which is earth. Right? Send those hearts up. Am I correct? Good. <laughs> good. 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 And where did the earth come from? From the deep, the dark, the heavens. Right. So I am 50% flesh and 50% spirit. But sometimes, because I'm not taught that, my spirit tends to take over. I, I just want to talk to a few old hoes or a few old pimps or drug dealers out there. I want you to know that there is hope for you if you desire it. You can stop doing whatever you want to do once you realize the benefit in having a relationship with God. So 50%. Okay, let's liken it to this. Your mama and your daddy. Your biological mama and your daddy. 50% of him and 50% of her. Same thing. And the older I get, the more I look like Ruby Mary. <laughs> but as I was growing up, I had characteristics of my mom and my dad. So if it's okay to happen in the earthly realm, then why haven't you accepted it in the spiritual realm? I am spirit, baby. I am supernatural. And I handle things supernaturally. But I'm trying to build an army, an army that does the same thing. Let's go to Philippians 2, chapter 2. Can we do that? Philippians, is this too much? How much time I got? Two minutes? Okay, Philippians chapter 2. And I'm coming from the NIV. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, they say I look like Jennifer Lewis. You do. You got that wide smile, Robin, like Jennifer. I don't want nobody. Oh, no, the wrong song for this uh, medium. My bad. Blanket with me in these streets. Go to Jennifer Lewis's page. She's so hilarious. Okay, Philippians chapter 2, the verse 7. Rather, 
I guess I shouldn't start there. Go to verse 6. Who, Christ, being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Okay, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, I'm saying it's possible. It's possible that the human likeness is what he created. And what's inside is a likeness as well. Some of us don't believe that the likeness is the inside as well. We just think that he created us to have two legs, two arms, and a head. The likeness is also the character of God. You act just like your daddy. How about you look just like your mom? See, it goes both ways. You act like and you look like. Just, you act just like your daddy. He scratches his head while he eats. The, look at her. You see what I'm saying? So not only did I have the shell of God in his earthly flesh, but I took on the characteristics of his daddy, Jesus, daddy, God, as well. So when we are here on earth struggling, it's because we're not being taught that there's another place that will give us peace and comfort. You can put all those drugs down, but until you get this, don't put them down. I don't want y'all wandering the city streets. All right? Once you become fortified, in the relationship that you have with Christ and begin to move, he'll let you know that suffering that you're doing, mm -mm, mm -mm. there are struggles that will happen. You say, why, Pastor? Because Jesus suffered. I don't want you to think this level goes without suffering. Yeah, this ain't a... a, 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 a Get a, uh, a Willy Wonka piece of chocolate and go and pass go. This you don't get no, no wonder ticket because the word of God lets us know if I suffer with Him, I'll reign with Him. So that lets me know that there's some suffering that's going to take place. There's some trials and tribulations that I must hurdle, but I must access the way He did in order to make it through. You're going through. Now, this gives me a, 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 a sense of well-being because it lets me know I'm not always going to be here. It's not always going to be like this. It's just for a period of time. And the period of time that it's for is until he sees that I come out as pure gold. See, there's a place that he wants us so when I'm elevated to the level that he needs me to be elevated, I'll be fortified to sustain all the concerns and troubles that the arrows throw at me. What, what are you saying? Moses. Yeah. Moses' problem wasn't with God, except in the beginning he was a little nervous and didn't want the job. The problem with Moses was the people that he led. Some of you all can't even deal with your own, uh, uh, um, what do they call your own um, peers at work. Let alone if they were your subordinates. That was for you, Neil, subordinates. You can't even deal with your co-workers. How are you going to deal with them if you're their supervisor? How are you going to make big decisions if you're the CEO? You care too much what the world says versus what God says. When you hunger and thirst and spend time with him, he will reveal to you that secret place. <laughs> I knew you'd like that, Neil. That secret place. And it's imperative that you hunger and thirst by thought, word, and deed. Let's start small. If I put a snicker to my lips, I bless that snicker. Because I know nothing. <laughs> it don't have to be this way. I could not not have a snicker. I could not have that ice cream sandwich. I could not have that steak. So by thought, word, and deed, you taught to bless your food. So consciously, you bless your food. So that's the consciousness I need you to understand when you surf and seek God's word, the logos. When you say, I love God, I'm running after God, 
I don't want you to think it's a track move. God is word. So you need to study some word. Does that make sense? See how that went in full circle? Yeah. And so when you hunger and thirst, he'll reveal things to you through word. Okay, let, 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 me give you, let me give you a prime example. When you're doing his work, he makes it possible for you to be where you need to be at the time you need to be there. Let's go to the Gospel of St. John, the fifth chapter. Sundays, 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 um, scripture. The Gospel of St. John, fifth chapter. I don't want to read all this. So let me give you a, 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 a cliff note. In this particular text, uh, there's a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years, and he lived uh, in these cubby holes called the colonnades. And allegedly, Jesus, uh, the Son of Man, would visit the colonnades every year and twirl the water, and if you got in the water, you'd be healed. All right, now you know, look how man makes up stuff. This, see, this is what's happening to our churches. We are distorted, we get distorted by certain things. Now, it says if the man could get in the water, but he says, I can't get in the water because every time I make a, a, a chance to get in the water and take this opportunity, someone gets there before me <laughs> and gets healed. Now, when have you ever known Jesus to only heal one person? Yeah, we gotta watch what our, our what what kind of teachings that are going into our head. We gotta watch because he's created to bless us. That's what he does. That's his that's his uh, product blessings. So the man says, "I can't get into the water." All right, and, and Jesus says, well, "Why not?" He said, "Because every time I make an attempt." Somebody gets over me. Ah. All right. You got it? That's the gist of the story. Now I want you to look at verse 8. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, verse 8. The man has this idea of how he's going to be healed. Jesus supersedes this idea. In verse 8, in verse 7. And he heals him. Then after he heals him, this is what he says in verse 8. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Once again, another man who's been healed, that Jesus says, pick up the mat. Pick up your bed. He always leaves us with something so we remember where we came from. Because if some of you church folks don't remember where you came from, then you start thinking it's you. You start thinking it's your check. You'll start thinking it's the gift somebody gave you. God, God, that's why Jacob had that lamp. You got to remember where you came from. It's important you remember where you came from. That's why some of you got scar tissue. Oh, you, oh that's a whole nother sermon. Look at chapter 8 again. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And this is the important verse right there. Verse 9. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. So when did he... Get cured immediately. When did he get cured? Immediately. When did he get cured? Immediately. All right? Somebody's like, well, I didn't get cured immediately. God's time is not your time. He will, he will do what he needs to do at the time that you need to do it. And I know some of you may be tired of suffering. Some of you may be tired of hurting. But trust what God has for you. He needs folk to see when this happens, his glory will be shown through you. He's using you right now. Suffering is a means to draw men unto him. And so I've got to start thinking when I'm going through, <laughs> boy, the good day. i got to start thinking, other people need to see how you're doing this, girl. Other people need to see how you're going through. And that's where the diadems come from. That's where the realm walking comes from. I got to pass this test. I got to stand tall. I got to show the people he is really daddy God. Oh, 
Verse 9, he says, get your stuff, get up. And immediately the man got up. Now go to verse 13. We're talking about ram walking now. We're talking about the same thing that is in, in Jesus. It's the earthly flesh. It's the spirit. Verse 13. Same chapter. The man who was healed had no idea who it was. For Jesus has slipped away into the crowd that was there. Now, just close, close, your, close your text. Close your book. The man had an idea for years how he was going to be healed. He had an idea. He thought it was the water. Churches got to stop telling folk it's the water. <laughs> There's healing agents in water. It makes you feel good to have a hot shower when you don't feel well. But, but, but it, it wasn't the water. We take things and we distort them in religion. Then the man talks to Jesus and Jesus said, just get your bed and go on about your business. And immediately this man was cured. Now, if you read the text in depth, it's called a pericrope. If you read the text in depth and all surrounding it, the colonnades were full of sick folk who probably had the same misconception as the man Jesus healed. What are you saying? Thought! Your thoughts are not open to what God has for you. Thought. Thought. It starts with thought. It starts with vision. I can be made whole. I will be made whole. Crowds all around him. The colonnades was full of folk. Matter of fact, I'm sure there were rotten people there, and I'm sure it stunk. I'm sure it was a state place because there were several porches. It was like porches, colonnades, cubby holes where people who thought it had something to do with the water, because somebody must have told them that, something to do with the water where really it's your belief. So this strange cat comes up and heals this man, tells him to go on. So after he gets healed, he realizes through conversation this must be the Christ. This must be Jesus. After the fact, just like the woman with the issue of blood. After the fact, he realizes this must be Jesus. Now, you tell me, you tell me, once that one man got healed in front of all these people without using water, how did he slip away? I'll wait. I can't tell you chicken legs don't sell at Harris Teeter without it being a crowd. Don't let them sell good bras at Macy's. You can't get through there. Oh, you got shine. Tell me how he slipped away through the multitudes. People laying on the floor. People clamoring around. People begging other people to get them into the water. How did Jesus slip away? I'm waiting. This must be Jesus. Come on now. Anybody had a this must be Jesus epiphany? That's called a rhema. This must be the crowd. You remember years ago at the Who concert? No, y'all too young for that. And people were trampled. Now, I'm just telling you, this is beginning to let me know, oh my God, Jesus is realm walking. He translated from one place to another. Past, that's Jesus. Yeah, that was. You can read it. That was Jesus. So you tell me this. If I am created in his image, then why can't I do the same thing? Because it was a conscious effort for him to heal that man. He consciously wanted to heal that man. He consciously picked the one who had been there the longest, who had the most distorted thoughts, because that's where the glory would be shown. When I'm operating in the auspices of thought, word, deed, Hunger and thirsting, I'm capable to translate from what place to place, 
According to coordinate, I'm realm walking. I am realm walking. That's right, Sister Irene. Another realm. Another dimension. Because somebody's got to tell me how he slipped away. I like how they wrote it in NIV. But you could go to uh, another translation. King James says it good too. Uh, you know what? Uh, Hillary's Bible. What's that called? The Messenger. L look at that one too. That's a good one too. That the, the, how do you slip away? After you, after you perform a miracle that everybody in the vicinity wants. <laughs> Man, that's Raymond right there. Why is that? Because you've read that several times before. You've never seen that. Raise your hand if you've never seen that. Come on, confess. 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 Raise your hand if you've never seen it. Talk back to me. Don't get slow. Talk back to me. Okay, I see you. I see you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Keep going. I need you to confess. Yeah. And then I need you to repent. Because it's a sin. It's a sin that you operate beneath your creation. You're sinning. That's right. You're sinning. You're selling your daddy short. And I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just not. I'm just not. Call me cuckoo for cocoa. Call me cray cray. Call me what you will. <laughs> call me. Well, just don't forget to call me for dinner. Call me what you will. Right. And so what was happening here it was all come, came to me once I go back to my favorite book. What's my favorite book? Genesis. Why is it my favorite book? Because everything is in there. Everything is in there. And from the beginning, I had to realize, why do I think? Because the church has always made me feel that I was being blasphemous when I thought that I was like Jesus. Oh. oh. The competition that the serpent gave to Eve. Remember that? Yeah. But the difference is, by thought, word, and deed, I thirst after him. He then allows me to, to know it's okay to operate this way. You see, you see the caveat there? I'm just not out there saying uh, you can't use this door because it's only for the pastor or you can't use this bathroom because it's only for the pastor. No, there is no hierarchy. That's why Jesus allowed the disciples to travel with them. You all think I'm crazy because I don't go nowhere without my disciples. No, how will you learn unless you sit at the master's feet? Oh, my goodness. So some of you are living in penitence for your sins. I feel bad, but you won't change your ways. You better repent. You better repent and start living according to what he wanted you to live by. Palaciously. And this is not a prosperity gospel. This is going back, going back to your creation. Nothing grows healthy if they don't know where they came from. That's why kids want to find their birth parents. That's why they do that stuff. They have questions. Questions. I'm not going to live beneath it. I'm just not. I'm not going to live beneath it. I know who my daddy is. And for all those of you who think you're orphans, I know who your daddy is. Call me. <laughs> I'll tell you who be your daddy. Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to be your mama. But <laughs> I'll tell you who your dad is. Realm walking is a conscious effort to be a good steward over what he has given me. And it's got to be all these places, not just this land. I'm telling you, you've got to see everything. You've got to have vision. You've got to know that there's more out there. You've got to know. Benita said, I know who my daddy is. <laughs> I know who your daddy is too. Yeah. And so 
when you begin to understand your origin, then you'll understand why it's difficult to see all this, and I'm not preaching politically because that's not my style either, all this upheaval, this racial upheaval, he's not pleased. Yeah, and I, I kind of I low-key hide from it because I've got to be conscious enough to do the work that he's sent me to do without getting involved too far in that because then I'll get lost in the plan and not continue to seek the vision. When you get distracted, it is a trick of the devil so you won't live out the life that he wanted you to live. That's what happened to Eve. She got distracted, but the life was already set for her. Okay, let's start. Let's go. Let, let's let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's get some of those things in there. These things you have to take away from Bible study tonight. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? All right? And then you go down to 14, and God in the flesh, the Word in the flesh, Spirit God. Okay? Okay, get this. I don't need you to memorize this. I need you to get this. Okay, get it, not memorize it. All right? So we find out that the substance of God himself is word. Right? Because that's what was first. All right? So the substance of who God is is word. So that means Jesus is a derivative of word. So when I say hunger and thirst after him, what do you think I'm talking about? Hunger and thirst to know more of him, more of his word. Most people are turned off about knowing word because they think it's scripture memorization. And it is not. It is relationship based. It is not always important. I went to, uh, me and my stories, I went to, uh, to get a mammogram the other day. Can I see mammogram? I did. I went to get a mammogram, and she asked for my, um, where I wanted uh, my record sent. You know, you got several boxes sent in several places. I said, oh, I just changed uh, not too long ago, my doctor, and I'm giving a fake name. And I said, uh, her name is Dr. Uh, Santiago. And she said, well, what's the first name? And I said, I don't know. But it didn't change the relationship I had with the doctor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you all get so caught up on little things that you forget the important thing. The important thing is to build your relationship with Christ. That's the important thing. To build your relationship with Christ. Yes. Yes. And through that, and through that, check this out. And through that, doors will open like you've never seen before. You all are so busy involving yourself with the why, you're missing who. Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Daddy God. Who? Holy Ghost power. Who? The triune God. Who? The three in one. Who? Elohim. Who? Rose of Sharon. Who? Lily of the Valley. Who? A battle axe in a time of trouble. Who? A fortress in a time of... Come on, children. It is the who that causes the manifestation. It is the relationship between you and the who. <laughs> Not Mr. Who. You remember the... Okay, that's Dr. Seuss. Okay. Come on now. I go in and out. Come on. You Did you see me just cross over? I was all caught up, and I wanted to tell you about Dr. Seuss. You better walk with, who gonna walk with me? Let's walk heavy. Come on, Nicole, the brightest morning star. Who? Somebody give me another who. Who? Good God, that's good to my spirit. Who? That's right, Mavis, Daddy God. That's who. I don't care how he does it. I just want to be the benefactor of what he does. The what? The who? The three in one. Give me another one. Who? That's good, Israel. Special needs, boy. Special needs. Who will? <laughs> oh, this. Hey. Who? 
<laughs> my time is up. <sighs> it is the who that causes the manifestation. Say it, Audrey. <laughs> Y'all better start throwing some money. Cash out. Kathy Mary. You don't get this for free. <laughs> Pastor Kathy Mary. New Birth Community, AME Church. Get you some good teachings. Get you some. Get you some understanding. Get you some manifestation. Don't get excited and emotional over a song and there's no manifestation. Every time that song come on, I cry. Well, cut it out if there's no manifestation. Oh, my God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul begins to weep because I refuse to cry. I refuse to cry. El Shaddai, thank you, Reverend. That's the who. Hmm. Lord of hosts, thank you, Sonia. That's the who. My peace in a time of trouble. Thank you, Benita. That's the who. Hmm. I'm telling you, who? Who is he and what is he to you? Good God, my, where's this secular stuff coming from? I must not have been saved at one point in my life. Eh, you must not have either. Who? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's right, Audrey. Who? You're welcome, Demetria. Who? Yeah. We're never going to appreciate him until we know all facets of him. I can just constantly preach. The great physician, I can't help on God. That's it, Neil. My provider, that's it, Kim. Stephen, my banker. Hey! <laughs> it is well with your soulmates. Amen. My everything, Brother Sullivan. Amen. My waymaker, Sidrain. My healer, Shirley Hamlet. Hey! Healer, Anthony Hurdle. That's it, children. My everything, Katrina Johnson. That's what he is. You getting caught up right in your house, my high priest. You getting caught up in your house, and I'm talking to you through an iPad. Waymaker, because he's real. He is real. It is the spirit and the flesh coming together. That's what causes praise. Not because somebody says, raise your hand. It's time for me to go. My time is up. When my nose turns red, ah, ah, er, it's time for me to go. I'll tell you what. I've enjoyed spending this time with you. My time is up, and I really appreciate you spending yours with me. Let's continue to walk toward him, not away from him. Let's continue to walk. I'm a realm walker. I'm created for this. My peace. My lion and my lamb. The source of my wisdom. Who? The prince of peace. Who? I will keep going until somebody stops. My stress reliever. My promise keeper. Go on, Amy. Go on, Israel. My best friend, Crystal Day. Come on, Marcia. My peace. Mm, mm, mm. Mary Swan, the source of my supply. Preach! I'm trying, sis. I'm trying. K Maynard, peace, joy, and whatever I need. When I need it, Ooh, my alliteration. Oh, that's his nice alliteration. <laughs> Whew, it is red. Thank you. It is red. It is. He's the lifter of my head. Angela, come on now! Can't hang low. Your head, that is. Yeah, he's able. He's able. What? The who? I gotta go. I love you guys. Love you, Jenna. Love you, Renee. Love you, Sister Anne. My light in the darkness. My joy. I love you, Brother Sullivan. Bright and morning star. Love you, Jackie Conley. Love you, Robin, my heaven and earth, my everything. My time is up. I got to go. <laughs> my motorcycle pilot. And boy, you know you need one. Mm, mm, mm. I love you. I got to go. Bye-bye.